Hello guys, welcome back to Dress Your Face Live. You know my model, I've been tagging her all day. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So today's class is really, really special to us because this has been like my number one request since I started DYFL and I did a similar class before with a girl who had acne but it was more of like a scarring issue that we were covering up. Um, and I did that a little bit ago and I don't know if all of you saw it yet or not but if you're not in the all access pass then that means you probably have not seen it. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to finally give you the acne skin class that you've all been asking for. So yay! Mm -hmm. So exciting. So um, I wanted to First of all, congratulate our model on being chosen. I had a little bit of a contest thing going on and I was accepting some submissions and I just want you guys to know that once in a while I am going to be doing these kind of model search contests so I can have some of my own students come on the show and enjoy seeing it from this perspective and helping us teach the rest of you how to do makeup for their skin type or their concerns or their look or whatever it is. So today it's just so, so, so special to all of us here at the studio and my model and um, I've been posting all day. You guys have seen the before and after and everything. Um, this is her with just eye makeup on and we are going to zoom in so you can kind of see a little bit more detail. Um, but this is her with just eye makeup on. We did that off camera. Well, you might have seen me doing a little something during the meet moments, but um, you know, I just really wanted to concentrate a lot on the skin today. We're gonna talk about some treatment options. We're gonna talk about what works, what doesn't work, and of course, everything depends on your skin and your own, um, you know, chemistry as well. Everyone's totally different. So while some treatments work on some people, it may not work for other people. And I've had my fair share of ups and downs with my skin as well, and I'm gonna share some of the things that helped me. Um, and then some of the more drastic measures for those of you who are wanting to do something very, very major to help with skin. Um, there are some, you know, laser type of treatments out there too, but it's so expensive, I know. Mm -hmm. So it's not that realistic for all of us to be like, oh, I'm just going to shell out $2,000 and get my face laser. You know, it's not easy. So um, I want you guys out there who have this kind of experience with acne whether it's teenage acne or adult acne, a lot of it is hormonal, a lot of it cannot be controlled, a lot of it has nothing to do with reaction to products. Sometimes it does have to do with reaction to products. Sometimes it's the fragrance that's in the product, so it may not even be like an actual ingredient, it could be the fragrance. You know, there's a lot of things that can contribute to acne, but I wanna hear from you guys. So on our latest post, a really funny post of us fighting with brushes on my Instagram, this one here, I want you guys to comment under that post and give me whatever questions you have. First of all, if you guys have questions about anything, uh, skin related, acne related, whatever, we're gonna answer those after class. Um, but I also wanna hear from some of you guys about your own experiences. What treatments you guys tried, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, any insider tips and knowledge you guys have to share. This is a community. Dress Your Face Live is like our own little world and we love helping each other and learning from each other. So if you guys have anything that you want to share, we would love to hear it and share it on air so that we can, you know, help each other. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started on our demonstration. Um, if this is your first time watching a DressYourFaceLive.com class, usually what I like to do is while it's live, Wow, I totally almost swallowed my gum. <laughs> while it's, I'm gonna have to spit this out because okay. this is like dangerous. Okay. Um, but while it's live, you guys would take out your notepads and pens and write down all the stuff, all the steps, all the product information that you guys wanna write down. And then the cool thing is, it is, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Team pull Live through. TV. <laughs> Team pull through. Okay, so yeah, um, I really, if this is your first time watching, this is so funny. We're going to be cracking up the entire show, just so you know. Um, the, the first time you're watching this, if you guys haven't seen a class before from me, um, if this is your first time kind of learning about the way I do things, which is a little crazy, it's a little bit unorthodox. Um, so you may need to write down some notes and stuff, but if you guys are seasoned members, which I like to say, seasoned members, meaning if you guys have been watching my lessons for a while now, then you probably already know a lot of the techniques. So you guys are ready to actually just follow along if you guys want to, 
you know, put your phone here, put your mirror here, put your makeup here, and just kind of go at it. You absolutely can. But like I said, if you guys are new, use this to write down your notes and then watch it again because it is recorded and uploaded. So watch it again, and then you can actually practice along and see how you like it on the model or on yourself. Okay? Good. So we're going to zoom in, and we're going to get started. I'm going to talk to you guys about our favorite primers first. And we're going to be kind of talking back and forth a lot, too, so you guys can hear my opinion and her opinion. She's also a makeup artist. Again, I tagged her in my post, so you guys can check out her work. Um, she's located in San Diego for all your makeup artistry needs. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so definitely check her out. But we are going to be talking back and forth so we can share some more stuff. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to prime her first. My favorite primer for my acne skin clients or anyone that has enlarged pores or any type of unevenness on the skin, um, I really love the Benefit Porefessional. So that's what we're going to use on her on top of the MAC uh, Basic Prep and Prime first. So then layer of MAC Basic Prep and Prime, and then I'm just going to go ham on the Porefessional from Benefit. Okay. But first things first, what we always like to do before we get started is sanitize your hands right in front of your clients. That way, no questions asked, you're covered, you're clean, you're good. We're gonna zoom in so we can see face. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we're gonna go in with the original MAC Prep and Prime. This is what it looks like. No SPF, no shimmer, none of that stuff. And one thing I want you guys to know about me, in case you're new here, is that I tend to not really follow rules. So whatever we do today in class is just based on my experiences, on what works for me and what doesn't work for me and my clients. So, um, you know, this isn't necessarily what they would teach in a regular school. This is something that is literally what I've come up with after 13, 14 years of professional experience and I'm cramming it into one massive lesson for you guys. So I just wanna make sure that you guys understand that because there's no one right way to do things. This is just my way of doing things and my students tend to absolutely appreciate and adore um, some of the techniques that I'm able to show you guys. So definitely try other ways too, but this is one of my foolproof methods. So now that I've prepped the whole skin, we're going to go in with the Porefessional, which looks like this. Porefessional from Benefit. And it's uh, a thick, it's a thick product. Okay, this is what it looks like. And we're going to apply that over any areas that have uneven, um, you know, skin tone and texture. It has a little bit of a beige undertone, um, so it does help to neutralize a little bit, but it's quite sheer. So um, I'm going to rely on our foundation and our powders to really do the neutralizing. A lot of people also love green concealer to hide redness or yellow concealer. Um, but the thing is, with me, all the products that are in my kit are full coverage. So you don't even need to waste time on corrective concealing when you're already working with such a full coverage product. It'll actually cover everything for us and we don't have to worry about that additional step. Saves a lot of time. <laughs> what are some of the primers that you like? Um, I like the Professional a lot. I use the Laura Mercier Professional er, Primer on myself. I love that. Yeah, I love it too. A lot of my clients. Nice. I should use primer on myself more often, but I, yeah. I really, really don't. <laughs> to be honest, on it every day, I don't use primer that much. But I don't think I don't think it's necessary mm -hmm. every day. No. All right, guys, we're all primed, so now we're gonna start on the foundation. And so, what I really like to do is there's this brush that I have from Morphe. Let me find out the number because, oh, M427, this brush here, M427. I'm just going to give it a quick clean with my Cinema Secrets brush cleaner. The best in the world. It is the best in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And it's it smells so, so good. Yes. It really does smell nice. 
Doesn't smell like an alcohol base like cleaner. Not no. at all. And do you find that it makes your brushes softer? Like I feel like it makes my brushes feel softer. It does softer. condition. Okay. It does condition, like, oh. yeah. No, it definitely does. You're so right. It okay. conditions and it disinfects and it removes any stains and impurities. So it's it's truly, truly amazing. Um, okay, so we are going to apply. Okay, so here's some of the foundations, you guys, that I really like for my oily skin clients or my acne prone clients. Um, this is the Pro Longwear Foundation from MAC. I love this, like, with a passion. When it comes to girls that have oily skin or skin that doesn't tend to hold makeup on very well, this stuff does stay a lot longer. But my favorite thing is to also mix it with Studio Fix if you want it to be a little bit more um, creamy. Like, this is kind of a thick product. Studio Fix is more of a liquid. So cr you can combine the two to make it just a little bit more creamy for you to blend out and apply. Both of them are pretty full coverage. I just go full on everything. Everything is gonna be full coverage, you guys. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this and a little bit of Studio Fix as well. I'm gonna mix it together to apply on her skin. As far as color is concerned, I don't match them too light, especially if you're trying to cover scarring. Let's say if you have a client that has scars, you don't wanna use a really, really light foundation because it could turn kind of grayish or weird. Mm -hmm. So make sure there's enough color in the foundation. Um, so I'm going to use NC25 for her, which is a little bit darker than her skin tone on one color with one product, which is the Pro Longwear. And then um, I'm also going to mix a little bit of NC15. I don't carry every color in my kit um, because it's just it's pointless because you could totally mix it and everything will be okay. So I just tend to mix until I'm happy with the color. So again, we're mixing NC15 and NC25 in the Pro Longwear and in the Studio Fix. Okay, here are the two colors together. We're just gonna use the back of the brush to give it a little mix. Okay, bam, there it is. And now I'm going to stipple it onto the skin. So it's gonna be kind of like a stamping motion, just like this. One side of the brush and you're literally just gonna stamp it on. I'm gonna have you turn a little bit this way, perfect. Pushing it right in. Huh? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> okay, so we're pushing it right in, you guys. The reason why I like to push in product, especially when the, there's a texture issue to the skin, is because it'll actually help to fill in the pores or any unevenness, and you're able to create a smoother look to the skin. Plus, you're not wiping off all the product you're putting on. So like buffing, you know, with the, the circling buffing movements, you're actually kind of wiping off half of the product you're putting on. So pushing it in, you're actually letting all that product actually transfer to the skin from the brush and you're pushing it right in, creating a much smoother effect. Okay, turn a little bit this way. And notice how I'm using a pretty healthy amount of product. It already is covering everything really nicely. We do not have to use a corrective product, meaning a green concealer or a yellow concealer to um, correct anything at this point. See how beautiful? And when you use a green, it's under foundation, right? Usually, yes. Because you do want to neutralize that green afterward anyway. Um, there, there have been times, like let's say with the orange concealer, for example, when you're covering dark circles, I use orange concealer, but sometimes I'll do the foundation first just to see how much the foundation and the regular concealer can cover it. And if that doesn't cover it enough, then I'll add a little bit of orange. Um, and then I make sure it's blended out. And it's usually covered up anyway when you do the Studio Fix powder on top. Um, so that's the cool thing about using Studio Fix powder is that you may not even need to go back with more foundation. But normally, especially when you're using green, like a crazy color like that, where you really don't want it to show on the surface, it is best to use it underneath the foundation. And we're just making sure we're getting all around the nose, 
little bit under the eyes, but we don't have to worry too much because we are going to use concealer in that area. Make sure you're getting under the chin. She doesn't have a breakout problem at all on her neck, but usually I do like to kind of even out. If you do have a breakout problem underneath the chin and the neck, make sure you're not neglecting those areas. Okay. Anching down just a little bit, beautiful. And now just whatever's left on the brush, I'm just kind of doing final, final packing. And we're good, okay. So now <laughs> we have a ghost face going on. <laughs> it's gonna look crazy before it looks good, believe me. All right, we're ready for the concealer step, which is the Pro Longwear Concealer. It's my all-time favorite under eye concealer. So we are gonna use that. I'm going to use NC20 mixed with a little bit of 25 just for a little color, just so it doesn't look gray. Okay, and I'm going to use my favorite concealer brush, which is the MAC 287. This one here, MAC 287. And look up to the ceiling. We're going to also stamp that right underneath the eyes. And I kind of continue stamping until it starts to dry so that I know that it's not gonna move around as much. If the product is still really wet, and then you move on to the next step, it's gonna end up creasing a lot more. So just make sure that you're patting it to the point where it's starting to mattify, and starting to dry up, and that means it's just not gonna crease as much. It's actually setting really well. So bam, 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 we're just gonna do this for a little bit. Make sure you're getting that inner corner of the eye and the nose area as well. Um, I like to do a little extra around the nostril, especially if that's an area where our clients get a little oily around the nose. Um, this product is going to be acting as our barrier, just to make sure nothing moves around. And notice that I'm, again, just patting it. Pat, pat, pat. Clean the nose ring. I should take it and then now I'm just going to kind of pat over any areas that the foundation couldn't quite cover. Very light patting, not much is needed because the foundation did a great job. We're gonna work on the other side. Look up to the ceiling. Again, patting it right in, being very careful around the eye. and letting it just mattify a little bit, letting it dry. Looking good. We're gonna do this other side of the nose now, making sure that everything is guarded really well. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but um, if you don't really do enough around the nose, sometimes whatever little product you put on the nose ends up sliding throughout the day um, and it could like spread out so if you don't have enough powder on it uh, as well. If the product is still kind of moist, it's going to move around the nose and then you can see the raw nose underneath the makeup nose. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but I hate seeing that. And so what I've noticed is when I add a little thin barrier of the prolonger concealer around that um, more oily zone, it will help to prevent any of the product from slipping. And then whatever's left, I'm, again, I'm just kind of going back and seeing if there's any areas that could use just a little bit more coverage. We're literally stamping it on. All right. So now that we're all covered up, it's time to just add a little bit of um, powder under the eyes first, and then we're going to set the whole face quite heavily. Um, I like to go nuts with powder. For those of you who have been my students for a while, you guys already know this, I go crazy with powder. Um, so what I like to do is to make sure I'm really, really setting it in so it doesn't look super cakey. And that's the thing, a lot of people are like, oh my God, I can't wear that much powder, it's gonna look cakey. Well, it's not gonna look natural, that's for sure. It's definitely going to look like makeup. Um, but this class is about covering acne. 
And the way to cover something without having to put layers upon layers and layers of corrective stuff and then your foundation and then whatever, um, I like to just go straight to the full coverage stuff so I don't need as much, but we are going to be packing it in and it's gonna be heavier than what you're used to. So the powders that we're gonna use again are the Studio Fix powders. I'm gonna start off with the NC20 color and we're gonna use it just under the eyes to set that concealer before it starts to move around too much with my 227 brush from MAC. Go ahead and look up to the ceiling. We're gonna make sure that everything is smooth here in case anything creased while we were talking. And I'm just going to pack a little bit of product here. Notice that I did not do my highlighting and contouring in this tutorial. And the reason is because when you're trying to cover, and I mean, in her case, it's not like, it's not a big deal. We could have easily just done it, but I want you guys to see like how I would normally um, treat a client that has a current breakout. Um, I don't like to do highlight and contour with creams because let's say if we were to do that, you know, when you're blending, you're going to be wiping off a lot of that um, product that we so carefully applied on her skin and I don't want them to see the acne bumps or anything like that underneath. So what I prefer is at this point going straight into powder and then contouring her with powders. And that way it's going to last longer and it's going to be more mattified and it's going to look smoother because we're not using heavy cream over heavy cream over heavy cream. From this point on, everything is going to be done with powder and it's gonna make her look very mattified, very fresh, very even. And the cool thing about powders is, here's the big like, you know, light bulb moment, is that because a powder, especially this full coverage powder, Studio Fix by MAC, because the powders are so full coverage and mattifying, there's no shimmer in these powders, it's actually blurring the skin. So this is literally like applying a filter to the skin in real life so nothing looks like you're covering any acne or anything like that. There's no way anyone would be able to tell. I'm just kind of going around the nose area real quick making sure that everything is nice and covered with my small brush first before I go into my big brush. And I'm literally packing it in so every time I run out of products with my brush, I'm going back in and adding more. So any hard to reach areas, we're gonna use the baby brush and then we're gonna just switch over to the larger brush in a moment. So I'm gonna be careful around the eyebrows since I already did them. All right, now we're gonna switch over to the larger brush. I'm gonna also switch the color to NC25 so that it doesn't look as ghostly. The larger brush I'm using is MAC 109. This fluff. I love those. Isn't it nice? Mm -hmm. Getting a really good amount. And we are literally going to pack it right into the rest of the skin. So the other powder color was NC20, which is what is closer to her actual skin tone on the face. Um, just to keep a little bit of that highlight across the center of the face and under the eyes. And then now I'm using the 25, the NC25 for everything else, just so it doesn't look so uh, ghostly. And make sure you're getting around the ear too, so it doesn't look too pink in comparison. So see how I'm just packing it on? I keep going back, adding more product and literally packing it on. Full, full, full coverage. But the cool thing is, because we're packing it, we're pushing that product so that it doesn't look like it's so much on the surface of the skin. It kind of just starts to blend into the skin. And as the day goes on, the natural oils of the skin is going to calm down the powdered look. But honestly, it just looks so flawless, especially the Studio Fix Powder by MAC. So if you guys are glam girls like us mm -hmm. and you like that coverage and even if you don't have a whole lot to cover, if you just like that very, very porcelain smooth look, um, definitely invest in getting powders like this. Full, full, full coverage, okay? So now you can see everything is mattified, everything is even, it's looking very 
um, smooth and blurred, basically. It's, it's like a filter. Now we're ready for a little bit of that contouring. So I'm going to whip out my contour kit by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Ta-da! And I'm going to mix um, Fawn, Havana, and maybe a little bit of Golden Peach. Um, just to give it a light contour first, and then I can darken it up with a little bit more Havana. And I'm going to start just with this upper edge of the cheekbone. Maybe I'll have you turn. Yeah, beautiful. Upper edge of the cheekbone. And we're very lightly, like a feather, dusting it on because I do not want to disturb any of the product underneath. So we're going really light. And we can roll it up now so that it doesn't look like a sharp line. We want to roll it up so it blends in a little more. And again, this contour stuff is totally optional. You do not have to contour daily. It's so fun too. I know, once you start, <laughs> it's really hard to stop. <laughs> and turn towards me. So like a feather, we're just going to sculpt the cheekbones. And the angle that I'm doing it, by the way, you guys, is, oh, sorry. The angle that I'm doing it is right on the top of the ear, going towards the corner of the mouth. And that's kind of a universal angle that looks good on most people. The only time I really ever change it is if someone's face is very, very long, then instead of using that angle, I bring it back up towards the nose so that it adds more width to the face. Go ahead and face the camera straight. So instead of this up and down angle, you would curve it right back up towards the nostril to add width to the face if someone's face is very long. But on most other face shapes, just to go from the top of the ear towards the corner of the mouth. Those cheekbones. Gorgeous. <laughs> I have some finally. Yeah. <laughs> no more one color. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just going along the perimeter of the forehead, right by the hairline, pushing this product right in. Again, I'm just using a mixture of my three favorite contour colors. So um, this is Fawn, Havana, and Golden Peach, just to lighten it up because she is fair. I don't want it to look um, muddy. We're gonna do a little bit along the, the jawline, not too much, okay? And now we're ready for the nose contour, and I'm gonna use my little toothbrush brush, <laughs> my oval number three from MAC, and we're gonna dip right into the fawn, and I'm gonna wipe a little bit off because I don't want it to go too hard on her, and I'm just gonna very lightly draw a couple of lines right on the side of the nose, just up and down, very lightly, and we're gonna connect the bottom a little bit so it doesn't look too, too long, and we're just giving a little light shaping, nothing too, too crazy. By the way, you guys, on Monday, I have a nose contour class coming up. So if you want to learn more about nose contouring, definitely stay tuned for that class on Monday. It is going to be a life-changing class, just like this one. Lots of eye winners this week. Yes, oh my God, this week is so amazing for classes. All right, so you guys see that? There's a little bit of shadowing going on. We have that three-dimensional look back to our face. And now I'm gonna go in with one of my favorite brushes ever. Um, I don't even know if they still make this. MAC 189, this big um, paint brush looking thing. If they don't make this, go to Michael's Art Supply. I know that they have a gazillion different brushes like this. And then we're dipping into the um, banana color. This is banana. And we're just gonna use this to further brighten around the, um, cheek, the, the raised portion of the cheekbone, so that highest point, and under the eyes. What this is gonna do is this is going to act as our highlight because I don't wanna use shimmer. And the reason why I don't wanna use shimmer, I mean, although we can because it is looking quite smooth, but we're not going to only because in general, we don't want to use shimmer on um, acne prone skin or oily skin or skin that has any type of bumps on the cheek because it's gonna show the bumps more. So in order to keep everything looking super, super like extra smooth, you wanna stick with mattifying colors, mattifying products. Let me just move this up a little bit more so we can, yeah. 
There we go. And now you can see that it's been highlighted. It's really popping nicely, but it's not, um, you know, shiny and obnoxious. It's just a really soft, smooth highlight. And we're just doing this with the banana color from Anastasia's um, contour kit. You're so right. When I put shimmer highlight on my cheekbone uh -huh. on like a bad day, like it just makes the texture look so much, much more bumpy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, on a good day, you can definitely, like, I feel like today's definitely a good day because this is looking very smooth, so I could easily add a little bit of shimmer here, but just for the sake of this class, we're going to keep it matte. We're going to keep everything matte. The thing that I like to do is if the face is super matte, um, if, you, if the client wants a little shimmer somewhere, then you could definitely add a little shimmer on the eyelid um, for the eye makeup, so that way, and then glossy lips. So at least there's some sort of change in makeup texture on the face. You have some shimmer going on in some places, um, but the, the face is completely mattified and it looks completely flawless. All right, cool. So now that all of the highlighting and the contouring and powdering is done, we can add a little bit of blush. And the blush that I'm gonna use again also has no shimmer in it. We're keeping everything very matte and very soft. And the color that I'm gonna use on her is is this called but um i don't know if you guys my my palette shattered <laughs> how sad here let me put a big piece together so you can see what the color looks like this is what the color looks like it's a very soft um peachy mauve and it is matte and it's called buff from mac i don't even know if mac still makes this but if they don't you better believe i'm buying it on ebay because i love this color and we're gonna use a little bit just right in between the highlight and the contour. And we're gonna blend it just slightly. Go ahead and smile really huge. I like to catch that smile as well. Right on the apple there. Okay. And now we have a healthy looking glow on the face. A little bit of that mauve tone so it doesn't look just brown and yellow <laughs> with the highlight and the contour. We got that in between shade. We're good. We're good. I'm just going back with my highlight brush just to kind of smooth that transition in between. That's all. Okay. All right. Looking amazing. And now all we really have to do is the lips and then we're basically done. That's crazy. Yeah. It saves so much time not doing the highlight and the contour with the creams mm -hmm. because my God, does that take forever to blend out? Go ahead and look down. I think I got a little bit of something on your lashes there. Okay, let's do your lips. Okay. And then we could do whatever little final touches we feel like doing. So I'm gonna use um, Sora Lip Liner, which is my all-time favorite from MAC. Love it, it's always sold out. It is, I know. Such a great color. It looks good on every body. Again, this is Sore Lip Liner from MAC, you guys. It's been my go-to color for like a gazillion years. I think I always have at least like eight of them floating around in my room at all times. I always forget that I have brand new ones. And every time I go to MAC, I buy at least two, three more thinking that I'm running out, and I'm never running out, because I always have my backups. All right, so we just lined the perimeter of the lip. And now we can use any one of our lovely shades from my lip palette. I kind of go crazy. These are all random, random matte colors throughout the years, and I've just smashed them in here. Um, I think I'm going to use Kind of Sexy, one of my favorites. And then I'm also going to use um, a little bit of lip gloss over this just to kind of get a little shine here. So everything isn't matte, you know, because we did do a smoky eye on her, and which, which that is matte. So I do want to add a little bit of shine right on the lips for some fun. So I'm going to use, what am I going to use? Nude Lip Gloss from Gerard Cosmetics. 
but I do want to mix it with a little bit of a pink. So I'm going to mix it with MAC Ample Pink. Okay, this is what the two look like. This is Gerard Nude, and that's MAC Ample Pink. If you guys ever need Gerard stuff, you could use my discount code. It's just DYF, super easy to remember. And we're just gonna go ahead and apply this all over. This looks so good on you. Okay. Ooh, la la. <laughs> okay, so now let's work on just some final touches here. So I think I am going to add a little bit more mascara. Okay. Go ahead and look down. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Um, if you guys want to know what I did on her eyes, it's actually very, very simple. Actually, why don't I just tell you right now? So I did the um, Tamana palette on South Day Beverly Hills. I know it's not available and I know I should not be using it still because it's such a tease, but she does have a lot of these colors available as singles, so you can make your own palette. But I used chocolate all over her eyelid. I used Noir on her lash line and I put um, a bangle right in the crease and then I put fresh under the brow bone. So brow bone, crease, all over eyelid, lash line. Bam. 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 Okay. And we're going to groom the brow a little bit with my favorite tinted brow gel by Anastasia as well. This is caramel. And we're just going to give that a little coating because with all that powder flying all over the place, I know some of it got caught in her brow hair. So we're just going to make sure we can get rid of all that powder. Okay. Remove any excess uh, excess products. All right, all right, guys. Now is the time to ask your questions on the post. So I'm gonna have our model just go ahead and do a little side to side turning, um, so we can see the completed look. And if you guys want to take any screenshots and post about your experience today in class, we would love to hear what you thought. Just make sure you're hashtagging Dress Your Face Live when you're posting about today's class so that we can see it and like it and show you guys some love. So hashtag Dress Your Face Live when you're posting your screenshots and let us know what you thought about the class. I love hearing your feedback. And if you guys have any requests on future classes, please comment them below. I love your look. Thank you. It looks I love it great. Too. Thank you. Yay! So now we get to answer some of your questions. So on the latest post on my Instagram page, go ahead and leave your questions there. In case you guys are just now coming in um, and you missed some of the class, don't worry. We are going to be uploading the entire class. I know sometimes um, you know, life happens and you may not be able to see the whole class from the beginning, so that's why we upload it so you guys can see it later. So let's see here. Um, okay. Oh, oh. I'm going to go way to the beginning and we're both going to kind of answer. So. So Victoria underscore Ninoska is asking, acne skin usually or oily skin all the time. Best tip for a long lasting makeup. Um, exactly what we did today in class. So pushing the product rather than wiping and doing it in layers. So what we did was a nice even layer of foundation and then we put very thick layer of the, um, well we actually did a little layer of concealer too on the areas that are very oily, usually in the T-zone. So we added a little barrier of the concealer there and that usually definitely helps. Um, and then we added a lot of powder and that will 
add to that longevity of your makeup look, especially when you're doing as much as we did today. And it doesn't even look cakey on her. Like you guys saw the close up view. It doesn't feel and it doesn't feel at all. exactly. I was just gonna say, yeah. I was just gonna ask her, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel heavy because the majority of the products we used were powder products, those are weightless. Mm -hmm. If you use a lot of cream product over and over again, that's gonna feel a little heavy. So, you know, our ratio is a little different in my online school, you know? We do things a little different, so that's gonna help. Um, let's see. How do you stop the under eyes from creasing? My under eyes are naturally creased, so when I try to put on foundation, it actually makes it worse. Okay, so remember how in the beginning of class, I don't know if you guys got to see it, but um, in the beginning of class, we did the um, concealer, we patted it with a flat brush, and we kept patting it until the product started to dry, it started to set really well under the eyes, um, and that step to me is very, very essential, because if you're going to slap on product, and if it's a creamy product, no matter what you do, if you're not going to wait for it to set before you put on a bunch of powder, it's going to crease. It's going to get too wet. So it's best to let, let it dry a little bit, let it mattify, let it really set, and then add a ton of powder over it and making sure you're really packing it in so that it doesn't keep moving throughout the day and keep creasing. So that's my biggest tip for that. Um... Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even say who she was. X vibes underscore. So the next question is from Ashley J Makeup. How can I prevent my makeup from coming off around the top of my nose when I wear sunglasses or glasses? My thing is I just use a lot of powder in those areas. So when I'm putting on my glasses and I'm taking it off, um, because there's so much powder there, it usually doesn't move around. Um, but if a little bit does, I literally just use my finger to kind of push it back into place. I mean, what do you do normally? Same thing. Like yeah. some, some of it's inevitable, but, you know, powders definitely help. Setting makes the world of a difference with everything that you totally. do. Totally. Especially a full coverage powder mm -hmm. like this. It's heavy duty, so it's going to last you a lot longer than translucent loose powders. Um, but yeah, like she said, it's inevitable that some stuff is going to not last, especially if you're wearing sunglasses out in the sun, in the heat, natural sweat will occur. Um, and so that may rub off a little bit, but just dab a little bit of that Studio Fix powder and you should be good. Um, okay. MG Beauty Lush is saying, you say you don't use any kind of setting spray and instead use highlighter to make the powder effect go away. Should I be using less powder on my combination skin? Also try your packing powder under the eyes and it creases a lot and it looks too powdery. Is, the, is powder studio fix better than loose powder? Absolutely. Loose powder is mainly made of talc and it is going to be powdery and chalky. If you're gonna use my techniques, definitely try the Studio Fix powder. It's actually, um, I don't know what they use as a bonder, but it's a lot smoother than the other powders I've tried. Even the other compact powders that I've tried, it's a lot smoother than those. So um, definitely use the Studio Fix powder. Um, and the other thing is, with the Studio Fix powder, the more you use, the smoother it looks. So if it's still creasing, that means you just need to put on more powder to keep it feeling dry. It's the ratio. So less creamy stuff, more powder stuff, and that way it won't move around as much because the cream is what's moving everything around. So try that. Another option is um, using a little bit, actually, yeah, exactly what I said, just using less cream. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess to keep it looking less powdery is also to use, like I was saying, the other option is to use a color that's not as white. So when you're choosing a color to put on under your eyes, if you're using a really, really light shade, it's gonna look powdery, it's gonna look kind of ghostly. So try a color that's maybe more closer to your natural skin color, um, and it's not gonna look as powdery. It's gonna look more like your skin, so try that. And if your cream underneath is creased before you even set it, you're gonna set the crease, the crease. into your makeup. Exactly. So you have to make sure that it's Smooth smooth. It. Yeah. Remember how I, I smoothed it with my finger when she looked up because it creased a little bit? So smooth it with your finger or a brush and then set it. So that's a big, very important point. Okay. Um. 
So, what is this? Natty Coquito is saying, I never had acne, but my pores appear like I do, and my face sweats a lot. What can I do for this? Please help. Um, there are some sprays out there now in the market that actually help with sweat. One of those is from Cinema Secrets. It's actually called, I think it's, oh, I might have it here. Yes, yes, I do. Oh, we could have used this in class. Okay, it's called Super Sealer. It's called Super Sealer, and it's from Cinema Secrets, and it says it's moisture-resistant sealer for all makeup. It is a sweat stopper. Sweat stopper. And this can be used after the makeup is done, or it can be used um, underneath everything as a first step, and it is a barrier. So I tried this on a couple of my clients during our heat wave a few weeks ago. It was bad. And they had outdoor <laughs> pictures to be taken. So I put this on and um, they ended up being just fine. So I'm pretty sure this is good stuff. If it says it works, and this is from a company I truly trust. So I, I definitely do like it. Um, so try that. And then have you tried anything else that helps? Not necessarily. No. No? It's, Dang, it's that's so hard. I know. It's tough sometimes. Yeah, I know. Especially mm -hmm. when it's like excessive sweat. It's mm -hmm. really hard to combat that. But there, this is one of the products that I heard about. And then um, another thing that um, we tried in a class before, not on DYFL, but, and maybe I should try that on DYFL sometime, but I tried it in a private class with one of my students, was the Milk of Magnesia trick. Okay. I've heard of that. Okay. Yeah. That is a very milky substance. You can find it at the drugstore. It is, is it a laxative? I think it's something, no, I think it's like for an upset tummy maybe? It's something you're, oh. you're supposed to drink for mm -hmm. your tummy. And I'm, I, it, either it's for bloating or for laxative or whatever. Um, but if you use it with a cotton ball and just spread it all over the face and let it dry, um, it is a barrier, it will not let you sweat. It's crazy. So we actually tried this on one of my models in a private class and it was funny because it was really hot that day and she has very oily skin and when they left for lunch and then came back for the second half of class, her face was fresh. That's it awesome. did not, nothing moved. We did not have to touch up anything for the second half of class. So I'm a believer and I'm thinking of buying it and then putting it in a small little container in my mm -hmm. thing so it doesn't look like I'm, here you go, here's some milk of magnesia. Um, and then having some Q-tips and maybe using that for some of my oily skin clients. So if you guys have experience with that, please comment in the comments uh, for my latest posts because I want to hear about your experience with that product to see if it is worth getting it in my kit. But I've used it in the, that class. It was my student's product and it worked amazingly. So those are two of the things that can definitely help you if you are um, an excessive sweater or have a lot of oily skin issues. Um, okay, so... Let's see here, let's get some more questions. Okay, Rakshita Santosh is asking, just your face, how do you cover bumped areas on the cheeks? The more powder I use, it looks creepy. Um, honestly, if you have bumpy cheek area, make sure your powder does not have any shimmer in it or any pearlescent sheen to it. Um, if you're using, let's say, MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Powder, it does have a little bit of a sheen. Even the ones that are the skin, uh, Mineralized Skin Finish Naturals, the ones that are supposed to just be regular powder without a highlight, um, it actually does have a little bit of a sheen to it and it can tend to look muddy. So if that's what you're experiencing, um, definitely switch over to a more matte, more flat shade and a fuller coverage product, so nothing sheer. Um, and again, Studio Fix is always what I go back to, no matter how your skin type is. On my skin I use it, on everyone's skin I use it. And for any problem, my skin I have freckles that I want to hide because they're not very cute. I've seen cute freckles and mine are not cute. They are very randomized and they're more on my driver's side and less on my passenger side and they're just not, no. So I use it to cover all that up. Um, others will use it to cover up scarring. I have acne scars on my chin that it hides so well. Um, and so I, I, and when I do have my occasional breakouts, that stuff, I mean, Studio Fix powder is like godsend. Like I've not tried anything else comparable. Maybe one day I should have a makeup brand. There you go. And create something <laughs> even cooler. Next up. That's a thought. <laughs>
that is the thought. To be continued. To be continued. <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah. But for now, Studio Fix is holy grail of all powders in, in my opinion. So definitely give that a shot. It's going to help blur the cheeks. And then remember, just like I did for her, we chose a blush that did not have shimmer in it. We chose a highlighter that did not have shimmer in it. So those you know, combinations of products that are completely matte and full coverage, you will get a smoother appearance of your cheek, okay? All right, let's answer a couple more questions before we say bye. Let's do it. Um, okay, so macaroni and cheesy, <laughs> or chessy. Oh. It's, I think it's Chessie. Yeah, it is Chessie. Macaroni Chessie. How cute is your name? So cute. How do you make a bright foundation last all day if you aren't staying to do touch-ups and she has particularly oily skin? Exactly what we've been talking about this entire time. Exactly what we've been talking about. Using products that are fully mattified, pressing into the skin, using full coverage everything, and doing it in layers like we did it. Using that barrier, either the, the mattifying spray that I just showed you guys, or adding that Pro Longwear concealer in between your foundation and your powder layers. Those are all tips to make the makeup last forever. No matter how oily your client is, or um, how much her skin tends to just drink makeup, it's going to stay. It's going to stay a really, really long time. Literally, she could sleep in it and she'll look exactly the same the next day. I do not recommend that though. Just for the record, I never recommend sleeping in your makeup. But you'll get acne. Yeah, or you'll get acne, yes. Every time I've slept with makeup on, I've always broken out. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, always happens. So no matter how lazy you feel at night, get rid of everything because it's going to save you for like a whole week of, of crap. Um, and, but what's really funny is the reason why I know this is true. Well, I mean, I've done it. Um, but a lot of my clients, it's hilarious, a lot of my clients will not clean off their makeup, especially if they're from far and mm -hmm. they don't get to get their makeup done a lot. Yeah. So I have some clients from Detroit, where by the way, I'm going to Detroit next week, I'll see you guys in Detroit very soon. Um, but some of my clients, a couple of them actually from Detroit, when they come, they make sure that they sleep on their back that night and wake up just like this. And they are perfect the next day and they always, without fail, take the next morning selfie, post it on Instagram, and say this is how my face looks when Dress Your Face does it the next day. It's, I guarantee, I guarantee it will stay amazing, but just don't do that. I mean, I try to, I smack her every time. I'm like, stop it, stop it, don't do that. But I mean, she doesn't bring out don't she's my mother. All right, cool. So one more question maybe, and then we're gonna talk about some treatment options, and then we'll say bye-bye. Um, There's a lot of questions about how I got started in the business, and I'll definitely have a separate, like maybe a special free class about that, um, about how I got started in the industry, because I know a lot of you guys have that kind of question, so I want to make sure everyone can watch that. So maybe we'll do a special episode just on that. Um, oh, someone's saying that she loves Milk of Magnesia. Awesome. Yeah. She says it's the only thing that helps her skin stay matte longer. Ronnie underscore glam said that. That's so great. So you just put it under your, your foundation pretty much. And yeah. Uh-huh. So cool. And then Dominican makeup artist said the same thing. She tried it for a client with acne and super oily skin for a wedding, and it lasted from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. Dancing in the Dominican Republic, it was super, you know, it's, it's a humid area. That's and she great. was sweating the whole time, and it lasted. Great. What are they going to buy? I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, okay, so Mandy Cord underscore MUA is asking, how do you fill up deep pitted um, ice pick scars? Um, and that's a very common question I get a lot. And basically the same kind of ways that we've been doing it, we used a filler first, which was the uh, Porefessional by Benefit. We use this as a filler. Okay. Um, this with your fingertips making sure that it's kind of filling in any pores or any deep marks um, and then making, making sure that you're stippling in the product into the skin rather than wiping. So stipple it in. Another thing is if you have large pores, you may need to, for example, apply product in one direction and then switch the direction for more strokes so that every time you switch the direction, you're kind of filling in the pores more and more, so you're crossing your directions, making sure that it, every direction is filled, and then final stroking would be the packing. And that usually does help for extremely um, porous skin. 
and then of course lots of powder yeah. the same way yeah. packing making sure you're really getting that in so that it's not too much uh, liquid and cream products just floating mm -hmm. on the skin you want to make sure it's all dry um, okay cool so that concludes the Q&A part believe me I'll be back on Monday and we'll do some more Q&A don't worry um, but I want you to talk about some of the treatment options and stuff. Um, I want to hear from our model too. I want to hear from you guys. What have you tried that worked and didn't work? Um, some of the things that I've tried, um, I really, really love Murad. Um, Murad is a skincare line. You can find it at Sephora. They have things for acne skin. Um, adult acne, teen acne, any type of hormonal acne. There's uh, so many different types of acne that one product usually won't cover everything. So you have to actually go in, speak with a representative, and they will help you find your exact regimen, your treatment regimen. Um, also, I've tried Obagi skincare, and they have something called pore therapy, which is a toner. It's the number two toner, pore therapy. And when I had some issues with my pores, um, maybe six, seven years ago, I went ahead and ordered some Obagi product and um, I used it as a toner before I went to bed, before I put on my night cream, and I did see a really big difference. I felt like my skin broke out a lot less. I feel like my um, the pore size shrunk a little bit. It got tighter, my skin felt more firm. It was just really cool product. So Obagi and Murad are my kind of go-to skincare products when I am going through a breakout phase. Um, and then of course, you know, the right primers like I've been showing you and things like that um, just to help under makeup. But as far as an actual treatment, those are the two that I really like. Of course, a lot of my clients have gone through Proactive and it does help to an extent, but of course, not everyone's gonna get the same results. So you have to kind of give it a try and see if you really wanna try something called Proactive. Um, it is a harsher, you know, a more higher grade um, regimen but it definitely, like I've seen my clients uh, go from a major breakout to more of a minor issue just by using proactive. And also like retinol creams helps to kind of resurface the skin. Those are a little bit more pricey, um, but they do help. Um, and then lastly, what we were talking about a little bit in the beginning of class was the option of a laser treatment. Um, I've been seeing this uh, MD, in Beverly Hills, his name is Dr. Simon. I've tagged him in my lip before and after picture. Um, he's truly, truly amazing. And he offers this thing called, I was asking him because I've been um, having these bumps on my cheek and it's not going away. Like literally everything I've tried, like my normal stuff, mm -hmm. it's so deep that it's not coming up, it's not maturing <laughs> and it's not shrinking. Mm -hmm. It's literally, it has, I swear to you, it's been on my face for a month and a half now. And it's like five, right? Like I put a lot of makeup on so you can't really see it like the magic of makeup. But um, it's there and it's it's very, very, very bumpy and rough. Like if you feel it, you'll feel it. Like it's rough. And so I, I talked to him and he said there's one thing which is called the cool laser treatment which helps with deep acne and surface acne. Um, it's very expensive, you guys. But if it's something that you really want to go for, it is available and it is in existence. There is something that can really zap it. And it's a one-time treatment. You don't have to keep going back. It's like a one-time forever treatment. Um, unless, you know, you're waiting a long time and something, you know, your body changes, like especially every seven, seven years, your whole skin changes, everything, your whole chemical makeup changes on average every seven years for human beings. So, you know, maybe seven years down the line or something, uh, things may change, but this is kind of one of those really long-term one-time deals. Um, and yeah, it's just called Cool Laser. So I would check it out, do some research, see if, if you're a good candidate for that. Um, and it's not just for acne, it'll help with other um, skin issues as well, like firming, um, scarring, discoloration, texture, whatever. Um, kind of helps with all sorts of stuff. So I think if this stuff doesn't go away, it's next. I may have to see him for that. I don't know. It, it gets addicting. Once you do one thing, you're just like, mm -hmm. hook it up, do everything. Yeah. So um, do you have anything to add to that? Any other treatments that you think would be worth people trying? Um, well, I can sp the only thing I can speak from experience with would probably be I have, tr I have tried Proactive. Um, I used it for a few months, and I know when you start a new regimen, you have to kind of stick with it. You can't expect it to work 
in a month or two. You mm -hmm. have to keep doing it, but it tended to dry me out too much because I'm mm -hmm. already kind of dry around my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started seeing an esthetician and then my skin has like improved like majorly. I think awesome. that's something you should definitely invest in if you have a lot of issues with your skin because it just helps my breakouts too. Like my breakouts aren't as bad. She does a microderm. Every, it's every four oh, weeks. Microdermabrasion. Mm -hmm. Good and stuff. It helps it stay smooth and it's really helped the texture. The scarring sometimes you can't really help with it's hard to see on like film, but I do have a lot of texture scars and some like darker scars. So um, those haven't really done anything yet, but you need a more intense laser treatment that will go in and get those. But mm -hmm. washing your face every night is is key. That's my biggest issue with getting laser. rid of all the makeup. Mm -hmm. And it's you like know. you get tired and then you're just like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> it's so it's hard bad, when yeah. you're that tired, mm -hmm. but at least get like the Neutrogena wipes. I love those mm -hmm. things. On my really tired days, instead of going straight in with a foam or whatever, I go in with the wipes first just to get most of it off and then quick cleaning and you don't have to deep clean as much because the wipe gets rid of a lot of it mm -hmm. as, a, as a first step. So you don't have to waste so much time when you're really tired to do all that. Um, you can easily just go in with the wipe first. Yeah. So. And I haven't tried Accutane. I've heard a lot okay. of people talk about it. I know there's a lot of... Is that the pill? That's the pill. And there's okay. a lot of like pros and cons to it. I think that's why people are really for it or they're against it. Um, mm. I haven't tried it yet, but I know some friends, they just said it's so drying. Like it dries your skin, it dries your wow. lips, it makes you thirsty. Um, oh my God. So I think you should really do your research on it if you were, like want to try doing it because there's a lot of pro pros and cons. But I have heard that it works. Um, Interesting. So it's definitely okay. something like an option to look into, the Accutane, but just do your research. Just like everything. I mean, it is a pill. You have to so play have with to, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to really try different things. Yeah. And yeah, especially with the pill going into your bloodstream, there are side effects to everything like that. Mm -hmm. So you want to just be careful and make sure that it's right for you. Um, also, birth control pills. I've, I was on... Um, I was on several different types of birth control pills um, growing up because... I had issues with breakouts and also some female issues. Mm -hmm. Let's not do some TMI here, but um, birth control pills definitely helped calm my skin down. I had issues with back breakouts and when I got on birth control, um, it completely cleared it up, completely. Like I never broke out on my back after that. Um, and then of course, you know, it helped with the minor thing. I still would break out once in a while, depending on if I slept with makeup on or like whatever, if I ate something, whatever. Um, but it definitely helps. So that's another thing. Um, if you're old enough to get on the pill, um, there's some good, good side effects to the pill. Um, and I've been off the pill actually now for seven or eight months. Um, and I think that's probably Maybe why some, some stuff is happening to me and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, yeah, not so fun. It's not crazy so how fun. everything in our body is linked. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the balance has to be just perfect and anything can just sway it off the scale. It's crazy. So yeah, I guess, I'm, I mean, I'm hoping that you guys learned a lot in today's class. We talked about so many different ways to hide the acne that you're trying to fight and how to treat it as well. So hopefully with the combination of those two things, you can get rid of acne forever. And even if you don't totally get rid of it, at least now you have ways to hide it and to feel more confident and you know ready for life in general. So I just really hope that you guys try these techniques at home, see how you like it. And again, if you want to um, give us your feedback about this class, Feel free to write up a little post on Instagram, hashtag dress your face live if you're going to post any of the screenshots from today so we can read how you felt about it and maybe even learn from your own experiences if you have anything to say about acne. We are a community. We love to learn from each other and I'm still learning from you guys too. Just like a lot of you guys say that you're inspired by me, I'm equally as inspired by you. I constantly go through my hashtags and I'm looking at everyone's pages and I'm like one of those stalkers where I'm just like, and then I go on liking Ram pages. So that, that's me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I love to share the love back. So hopefully um, you can post a little bit about it and I can read up. And if you guys have any other questions, um, I have another class this Monday on nose contouring and we'll have another Q and A then. So I'll definitely be able to answer some more questions that day. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we're gonna say good night now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much Bye. for watching. <laughs>